Read It Later applications have always been important tools for managing my digital library of resources, which usually includes items like articles, videos, documents, and podcasts. If you're not familiar with what a Read It Later application is, it's essentially an app or service that allows you to collect and organize media to read or watch or listen to at a time that's convenient to you. Now, before I started using Readwise Reader, which is the application that I want to talk you through today, I I was using a few different services to manage my library. The first is Pocket, which was my Read It Later app of choice. The second is Feedly, which I was using to manage my RSS feeds as well as my newsletters. And then any highlights from those sources would be exported into Readwise. But when I discovered that the creators of Readwise had actually developed their own Read It Later solution, I figured that since I was already paying for Readwise, I might as well migrate all of my content over to Readwise reader and i'm happy to say that i do not regret that decision now in today's video i'm not going to talk you through every single feature of readwise reader because the team behind it has actually created lots of useful documentation and tutorials on how to use the service instead i just wanted to talk you through some of the features that i enjoy the most and that i think set readwise reader apart from its competition now reader is available as a web app as well as a standalone app on ios ipad os android and so if you're using multiple devices, you can have your library synced across those different devices. Now, there are a few different ways to add documents to your reader library. You can do it from the share sheet on your phone, from the browser using the reader extension, and you can also get a custom email address that you can use to forward emails straight to reader as well as one that you can use to subscribe to email newsletters. Other ways to import content into Reader include subscribing to Twitter lists and adding RSS subscriptions. Now, one of the things I love the most about Readwise Reader is its design and interface, which is clean, modern, and it doesn't get in the way. And I think I can show you better than I can tell you. Now, here we are on the homepage of Readwise Reader. You'll see here that each document is displayed with an appropriate photo if one is available as well as the publication that it was saved from, the title, as well as the name of the author, and an approximation of how long it's going to take for you to read that article, or if it's a video, the duration of that video. Now, on your homepage, content is displayed to you based on a number of different views. Some of these views have been created by default, so as you can see, this one recently added. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Quick reads, so anything that is shorter than 10 minutes and that you haven't archived as yet. We have everything that is new in my feed, as well as recently highlighted. Now, you can also go ahead and configure how you want these views to be displayed on your homepage. So if we look in the top right hand corner here, you'll see a configure button. And if I click on that, it shows me all of these views and I can go ahead and select and deselect based on what I'd like to see on my homepage. It's important to note that you can also create your own views. As an example, I said earlier in the video that I like to have my newsletters sent directly to Reader instead of having them go to my email inbox and creating a lot of clutter there. So I decided to create a custom view for my newsletters. So instead of having to sift through my feed to find individual newsletters, I can simply click on the newsletters view and it takes me directly to all of my newsletters. Here in the web app, you also get to have views on the sidebar. As you can see here, we have articles, books, emails, PDFs, tweets, videos, and then newsletters, which is one I've created, blogs I've created as well, and then shortlist is another default view. And what's nice is that you can quickly access each of these views using a keyboard shortcut. So let's say that I wanted to quickly get to my articles, I can hit four on my keyboard and I'm taken to my articles. I don't think I have any books or emails saved, but let's say I want to find my PDFs, I can hit seven on my keyboard and I'm automatically taken to those PDFs. Now, apart from home, you also have a library tab. So if I click on that, you can see we have inbox. So that just includes everything that I have manually imported into Readwise Reader. We also have tabs for later. So as you can see, any documents you've chosen to read later, as well as the archive. So whenever I'm finished with an article or a podcast or a video, whatever it is, and I know that I want to reference it later and I want to save it to my library, I will put it into my archive. Now, speaking of archiving and storing content, Readwise also makes use of 
tags and I find that tags are really useful for managing and searching your content. So usually before I put a document in the archive, I will attach a relevant keyword that sort of encompasses what this document is about. So as an example, let's look at this one, Sigurd Nunez's Art of Noticing. I have attached the tag or keyword interview because this is an interview with the author and I've also attached reading because it has to do with books and reading. So if I were to actually click on reading, that should take me to every single piece of content that is related to reading that I have ever saved. And if we scroll all the way down, you'll see that I have content in here that dates all the way back to 2016. You'll also see that there is a tab for the feed. And your feed is essentially a stream of content from one or more sources. So let's say that you like to read articles from the website Aeon and from the website Big Think. What you'd have to do normally is you'd have to manually go to each of those websites when you want to read any new articles or uh, media that these websites publish. But with Reader, what you can do is you can add several sources to a feed so that they will constantly update with any content or media from those sources. Now let's talk about the actual reading experience with Reader. So as you can see here, I have clicked into a newsletter. This is one called Dense Discovery, and this is essentially how it looks. So you have your main content in the middle, and then you have two bars on the side. On the left is essentially a structured guide for all the different headlines and um, sections that are within this newsletter. So I can quickly jump to, let's say, Worthy 5, I can jump to the section that talks about books and accessories, I can jump to food for thought, and then in the sidebar on the right you'll see that we have some metadata about the document including what type of document it is, the source, when it was published, the length. Um, we also have notebook, so if you make any highlights and notes these will appear here, as well as links, so any links that are within this newsletter and any that are suggested based on this content. A must-have feature for me when it comes to apps like this is being able to annotate and highlight important information that I find interesting or that I'd like to do more research on because this is a feature that actually helps me to engage and interact with the content and that's why I'm reading in the first place. The good thing about Readwise is that not only can you highlight text but you can also highlight images, tables, rich text and more. Highlighting is something that can be done within the Readwise Reader app once you have content in there or it can be done on any website on the web as long as you have the Reader web extension. So as you can see here, I've highlighted this section here on Habeas Corpus and we have a few different options. The first thing I can do is go ahead and just create a highlight and that will then sync with Readwise. The next thing that I can do is add a note. So let's say that I wanted to add a note that says research this later and I can save that. And once I make that note, it's actually going to be saved in the notebook section here that I showed you earlier. You can also add a specific tag to this highlight if that's something you wanted to do. And another interesting share feature is that you can share a highlight as an image. And as you can see, we have a few different options for customizing the font as well as the color and the orientation of the image. So I think this is a nice feature to have if you have come across something that's really profound that you wanted to maybe share on socials or share with a friend. Now while we're on the topic of highlighting and annotating, I wanted to talk about one of the more interesting features of Readwise Reader, one which I don't necessarily use a lot but that you might find some use out of and that is Ghost Reader. Now Ghost Reader is a feature that makes use of the AI language model GPT-3. So let's see it in action. If I were to click Shift G on my keyboard, you can see we have some options that pop up here. So we can ask this document a question, we can summarize the document, we can generate thought-provoking questions about the document, we can also generate Q&A pairs based on any highlights that we've made, and we can also set a custom prompt. So just to give you an example, I want to know what this document is about in summary. So I will click summarize the document. And as we can see over here, Ghost Reader is working on a summary for us. After a few seconds, it gives us a summary of the article. And as you can see, it says summarized by GPT 3.5. It says the article discusses the concept of non-human personhood and the recent legal battle for Happy, an elephant at the Bronx Zoo, to be considered a legal person with a right to bodily liberty. And if we go into our notebook, we can see that our summary has also been saved in here.
I can see how this would be a really useful feature in some use cases. You know, you're trying to look up a concept or an idea that you're not familiar with. Maybe you're a student who's trying to, you know, make some flashcards based on what you've highlighted in a document. I don't personally use this feature that much, but like I said, I can see where it would be useful. Now, one thing that I know can cause some friction when you're deciding to move from one service to another is whether you can migrate all of your data seamlessly to that new service. So it was a great relief to me when I found that Rewise Reader allows you to import all of your already saved content from other services like Instapaper and Pocket, for example. In terms of integrations, of course, Readwise Reader connects with Readwise, which then exports to other services such as Notion, which is what I use, as well as others like Obsidian, Roam Research, and Evernote. So let's quickly talk pricing. Now, Readwise Reader is technically still in beta at the time of filming this video. Anyone who has subscribed to the Readwise full plan, which is $7.99 a month, automatically gets access to Readwise Reader. The company has said that once Reader is out of beta, it does plan on repricing those subscription tiers, but it does not intend on increasing the subscription prices for people who have already subscribed. So that's just something to take into consideration. So if you're someone like me who has an ever-growing library of digital content that you'd like to store and organize and manage, I highly, highly recommend Readwise Reader. Overall, I'm really satisfied with Reader's functionality and I'm looking forward to seeing what other features the team adds in the future. If you enjoyed this video, remember to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing. Comment and let me know if you use a Read It Later app or service. And if not, do you think you'd consider using Reader? I'd be happy to hear from you as always down in the comment section. So take good care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.